Good morning everyone, how you doing? Today's job is to install the DC charger and get it ready for wiring. So I'm gonna do that and I'm gonna mount it to the uh, custom bracket I have. That was made by SPH Engineering. So big shout out to Simon for that one, I appreciate it. And uh, yeah, we'll get to it and get it all fitted up. So this is the uh, DC charger I'm using. It's the Intervolt DCC Pro, 12 volt, 25 amp, has a solar input. I'll show you all that when I uh, get it mounted to the bracket. So this is the bracket that uh, Simon made up for me from SBH Engineering. So this goes in the engine bay in the back left corner. And it just keeps out of the way of everything, away from the exhaust. So it should be all right there because these things operate up to 80 degrees in temperature. I'm pretty sure it doesn't get that hot on the intake side, so it should be all right there. And uh, yeah, just gonna mount it with these uh, Allen key bolts and machine washers and nylon nuts uh, onto the bracket. And, uh, and then we'll mount it on the car. We'll get to uh, undoing this. We'll take this out of the box. I'll kind of go over it with you. So this is the uh, Intervolt DCC Pro. Yeah, with a key, my key might fit. Yep, it does, beautiful. So I'll show you how these all wire up. I did have one of these in the 90 series before I lost it. So I've gone with it again, it is that good. So, so cover comes off and it's all battery lug terminals. So, all of these here, all battery lug terminals. So, uh, depending on the amount, so that's your main battery, that's your auxiliary, that's your solar input, that's your negative. And then if you want to trigger it by ignition for smart alternators, you uh, run a sensing wire there, or you buy an inertia sensing module for this. Um, so that's the unit there. And then the reason I buy these I still have to work out where I'm going to mount it. In the process of trying to get a center console for the 80 series. So it comes with its own little display, which is all backlit. Um, and you can run up to two batteries on this as well, which is really cool. <clears throat> so, yeah, that's, that's the unit. It comes with a big long cable, so to hook all that up, there's a uh, big data cable. I'll put that out of the box here in a minute. Sit down. Ah, jeez. So, yeah. So it comes with a data cable here. Uh, it's four meters now. It used to be three, I believe. So, yeah, that just, uh, you either drill a hole in your firewall or just run it through your grommet. And, uh, yeah, that plugs in. That end there is for the DC charger. That's for the display unit. And it's <clears throat> got a little plastic cover on it. So you leave that there to feed it through the firewall. Um, also, it comes with a manual. Just chuck that over there. So yeah, it comes with, it comes with an instruction manual on this one. How to set it all up. Um, it does do lithium as well. So there's your standard lead acid, AGMs, gel batteries, lead calciums, and your life profile, which is the lithiums, with the battery management system only. So if it doesn't have a battery management system with your lithium battery, then this is not gonna work for you. We'll get to putting it together. So, I'm my little quarter inch ratch socket set here, because I reckon I'm gonna need a real small uh, Yeah, a real small socket. So I'll find out what it is. I can't even remember. I think it's a four mil. It's probably gonna be yep. eight mil. Yep. So it's an eight. And for this one, I will be using an Allen key on the other end. 
should be that one. Nope, too big. It is. Yeah, I'm missing an Allen key. Nice. That's gone somewhere. Uh, should be three mil. Or number three Allen key. Yep, beautiful. So pretty much how this mounts in the car, it so mounts in that way. So I have to get the unit here. Just work out which way I'm going to go with it. So it will mount up like so. Like so. so on the back of this unit, I will show you quickly is the data cable. So it's got to feed through the firewall. So turn this around on my side so I can see what I'm doing here. So it has to go that way. On it. So I'll go auxiliary. Auxiliary will go out to the firewall. This will come forward so that works fine. Solar I'll work out. Negative I'll have to earth to the vehicle somewhere. Um, so yeah, how I've done going with this is some machine washers and nylock nuts. So the fiddly parts, putting all the bolts in. I'll go through the holes, which is not a problem. Just getting it through the actual bracket. I did buy extras as well. So I'll show you all this when I'm done kind of hard to see when you only got one camera running at the moment. So if you guys are running dual battery systems, leave in the comments down below what you're using. I know a lot of people will be using Red Arc. But I like to, uh, I was having a discussion last night, I like to go a little bit against the grain when it comes to this. Um, probably shouldn't have put them all in there like that either. But yeah, what I've done there, as you'll see, just the bolts in, in there. Now these are actually a little bit tight in the bracket, so I'm gonna have to wind them in, so I'm probably gonna lose a few. We'll see, might work out for me. And I apologize for all the birds this morning. They're, uh, they're out in force. Mm, probably gonna hear them. Crows and doves and all sorts carrying on this morning. Yeah, this is going in nice. This will look good. So there is another bolt I do have to change around, so I will move the car around after this and uh, put it, this bolt goes into the bracket back in here. So I can just get it in there with it all bolted down, which is really good. And look at the last one here. Back in this corner. Now I'm gonna run another machine washer on the bottom as well as a nylon nut. I like to make it look nice and tidy and spread the weight evenly. I'll just nip them up like so. Makes it a bit difficult with this shoulder still to do a lot of things. buy extra uh, nuts and allen key bolts as well for this one. And the last one here. Come on. Also guys, if, you, if you've got some pictures of your setups, jump over onto my Facebook 
page, it's just Oztrax 4x4. And uh, show me on there what you've done. Be interested to see. Put some pictures up there. So I work in I work in the industry, so it's always good seeing what other people have done as well. Is that the right size? Now I'm questioning myself. No, it's not an eight. What is it? Seven. Some weird odd size. Yeah, seven. Okay. There you go. Um, I'll grab a seven up here in the small one. It's not an eight mil, it's a seven mil bolt. Right, eh? Her down. Watch out, I don't break the countertop here. That's it, that's how it's mounted. So it's on the bracket. That'll bolt in to a couple of factory bolts, one there, one there, and that will go on where the bonnet stay goes at the back. And then that's bolted up in the car. So I'm gonna move the car around and I'll start stripping out the old Red Arc SBI-12 um, out of the bay. So I'm gonna probably have to pull the battery out on that one. And, uh, and then we'll uh, Get to bolting this in, which would be pretty straightforward. Right, I'll be back soon. All right, so just pulled the car in. So the Red Arc unit is sitting here. It looks like there's a couple of screws in there. I don't know if we're gonna have to pull out the uh, indicator yet to get those screws out. I'll soon find out, I guess. Um, so yeah, that's running a cable to here. And then the previous owners run the cable across with radiator fan shroud, which I don't like, and to the uh, second battery. So that's all gonna come out. The uh, bracket mounts up in this corner here, so it's not in the way of everything. And it sits forward, so I'll be able to get the diagnostics port still. And yeah, it just mounts off of that there, so it should be all right. Um, yeah. And then, yeah, I don't know here, this here, I'm a bit concerned. I don't know if we're to get a screwdriver in here. That battery's loose as too. That's not good. It's not loose, but yeah. All right. So, so yeah, I'll, I'll get to pulling all that out, and uh, then we'll mount the uh, DC charger bracket.
asking for trouble out doing that. So I'm put the battery in here without a, uh, any way to get it out. It's ridiculous. You know, they usually have a, have a handle on them. rethink this one all right so I finally got that out and the trick with that was to take the battery bracket out and left hand under and balance it lift it up the boy was a bloody heavy heavy I tell you so I'm curious how that wiring has been run this my UHF so the locker's only got, I don't know what they've done with the uh, locker wiring. I'll have to check it at some point. So, all right, now I'll show you this here. So the Red Arc SBI-12 is there. It's a really old one too, but now yeah, it does the job. So I'm gonna try and get a screwdriver down here. Get this one here. I'm hoping they're uh, just self tapped in there and not um, and not bolted on the back otherwise yeah I have to undo that one I believe and and the indicator pops out forward so but we'll have a look give it a shot not really going to be able to see a whole lot but I've got to try and get them out We are self-tapped. Yeah, that makes it easy for one part of it anyway. Here's I've got a big dirty hole in my car. Sometimes I just don't get uh, get why people do that. You know, if you're gonna put a drill a hole, do it properly. Roof nut it or something. Hmm. So that's actually the battery earth. There. Now I can see a hole here that had, well, it wasn't drilled. And I'll show you when I get this thing out. The factory hole in the garden, you could have mounted a bracket off of it. People like to take shortcuts, I guess. Right, let's tighten this back up so I don't forget it. Because that would be annoying trying to start it and I got no starting power. Okay, now yeah, pull the other one out. And then this whole lot of wiring comes out. So from memory, as far as I know, this was about 10 years ago this was put in. 
There we go. Yep. Done. So that's the old unit there. It's all out now. And uh, I can sell that off to someone to put in their 80 series if they like. If you're after a uh, basic dual battery system, let me know. We can organize something. Right, so that part's done. So the next part is to mount the DC charger over here in the engine bay. Now I do need to get something to prop up the bonnet. Maybe a broom might work. So I'll have a look and find something. Because I do need to undo that bonnet strap. Nope. That is too long. I'll do something inside. I think this will do the trick. If I don't break anything. That'll work. Brilliant. So it's pretty well gonna sit in in there, just here. But what I'm gonna do is uh, start unbolting a few things. So actually what I might do first is run the cable through, through the firewall. Gonna do that first. I have this cable, and I've gotta run it through the firewall so it plugs into the unit. That goes into the vehicle. Um, gonna be fun trying to feed this through because I've got a whole heap of stuff going through there already. But we'll uh, we'll try and make it work. So gonna be fine. Got a roll of wire here, some electrical tape. I'm gonna cut a piece off, feed it through and then tape this to the other end and then I'll pull it through the vehicle. Unfortunately, this is the only way to do it sometimes, especially when you've got a whole heap of stuff uh, packed through. And it's really tight and then you just can't find the uh, other side of the grommet to push it through. So this will do the trick. And, and I'll, uh, I'll show you how I'm doing it. Bit of wire. Tape it on. This is for you guys who uh, haven't worked on their own vehicles before. And for those that are left with a little pro tip, have a few of those. I was showing one yesterday actually to remove bearing races. Very cool little trick. I need to put a bend in the end of this to hook around the tape. Pliers, did I? Or did I? Oh, we we'll use the side cutters, that'll work. Bring yourself a pair of pliers, don't do what I'm doing, but this will work. Just to bend it so it doesn't catch in anything, like so. So, that's it. Boop. That's it there. Pretty simple, straightforward. That's, that's holding on there now, it'll pull through. So, back to running this. Don't know if you're gonna be able to see it on camera. This is right down here, probably not, but. Just a matter of Feeding it through, there we go. I had the, the pop, but. Put a bit of an angle on it. Try that again. What was that? Oh, my electrical tape. Don't want to lose that. All right. There we go. So that's three. Wires run there. Put 
and it's the wire here. So I'll pull it through until I get the actual top of the wiring through here. Once that's through the hole, then you just pull it through on the inside. And we're done. We are through. And that's how you get wiring through without damaging your cable. So, and that's why that cable has a plastic uh, uh, shield on it. So, that's it. That's how you do it. All right. I'm going to run that through and um, I'll be back with you in a minute. All right, so the next thing to do, have to undo that bolt there, this one down here, under my page canister. I think, no, it's a vacuum canister. That one, I think, maybe, I think so. So the brakes, yeah, it's vacuum canister. And, uh, and undo the bonnet strut here, and then I can bolt in the DC charger, so I'll show you that. don't actually know what this bolt secures. Possibly the heater box. I just don't know on that one. There's that one there. There's one. All right, time for this to go in. So I'll start up the top here. This is the one that holds the uh, the bonnet straight up, and it's the uh, most important one. Simon has done an amazing job yet again. Always does a wild job. All right, so I've got it all mounted. And uh, as you can see, that is not going anywhere anytime soon. It's an awesome mounting bracket. Huge thanks to SBH Engineering once again for uh, making that bracket up for me. And uh, yeah, we worked that out together. Where to put it, yeah, that was a pretty good spot. So all we're gonna do now, Put the battery back in hook everything up then i can start wiring the rest of this so i'm going to run a uh, like as we're wiring we'll come down into the battery here have the other one's going to go along the firewall and around to the uh, positive side over there now that is the wrong battery on that side it is meant to be around the other way so i've got to do something with that battery at some point too there's only a lead acid so i want to change it to something better maybe an agm or even if i can get a lithium under the bonnet maybe providing it doesn't get cooked. Um, other than that, yeah, that's it so far, guys. So, and I'll uh, get that battery and then get to the wiring. All right, guys, everything's buttoned up. Battery's back in. I will be changing that at some point. Intervolt is mounted. Um, I just have to run now the uh, main positive uh, auxiliary positive, earth it, which would be pretty easy. Make up a cable for that and uh, and program it inside and that's it. So that's not a hard job um, and I'll be getting onto that shortly. But yeah, all looking good so far. Looks nice and neat and tidy. Um, yeah, this battery, obviously this will be changed at some point too. So I'm going to have to... Uh, Maybe do something about that before I run the wiring on that. Because um, that's around the wrong way. So if I make it to here, here, then it'll be fine. Righto. So yeah, I'll get cracking with that and I'll check it back in when I'm done. 